Welcome to another episode of The Blitz. I will be your host, Brian Greer, and today I will be recapping TCU's total alignation. Ali- ah, I can't even speak today. All right, excuse me, people. Let's try that one more time. Annihilation victory over Stephen F. Austin, 70-7. to Now, before I get into this game, I do want to give a kudos to the mighty Auburn Tigers for beating that juggernaut that is known as Jacksonville State in overtime. I mean, that was an impressive win. I don't see how you came back to beat a team like Jacksonville State, but you did it, and uh, you definitely deserve to move up to number one in the AP polls next week just because you're the uh, mighty SEC. Ask Ole Miss about that while you're at it. All right, how about we get into this game, shall we? Like I said, TCU annihilated Stephen F. Austin 70-7. This game from the get-go was over. Now, the first couple of first drive, TCU didn't look that good, but that second drive, you saw an incredible throw to Kobe Lizabee, who finished this game with 142 yards, a one touchdown pass from Trayvon Boykin. Just got it down the field to him. A 50-yard touch, actually. A catch that set up a touchdown run of about 10 yards from Aaron Green. And then it was on from there. Trayvon Boykin was on front and center today. Finished the game with 285 yards, four touchdown passes. Did it all today. Lizzie B. Dotson, Lizzie B. Dotson. Just back and forth, back and forth. He was amazing getting the ball out. He had, like I said, Incredible touchdown throw to Lizzie B. speed kills, just kills Stephen F. Austin. They had no answer for him all day long. And when Boykin has time to set his feet in the pocket and throw the ball, it's a touchdown opportunity every game, every game. And we saw that today. There was no doubt about that. And you could just tell that TC was on a mission today after LB pundits were bashing them for not beating a eight-win team back-to-back years like Minnesota last week by 1,000 points. I, I don't understand it. TC is the only team that is held to these standards. Anybody else, like Ohio State or Alabama, it's a grinded-out win. They just grinded it out. So, hey, that's just the way it goes if you're a TCU fan, if you are a part of TCU football. But, like I said, today was an excellent win. You also had Denzel Johnson. With the 50-yard pick six, incredible play. Red, the quarterback of Stephen F. Austin, all the way. Great touchdown. This was a vintage, vintage TCU win. Even though it wasn't against a top team, this was definitely a layup win, a layup game for them. But if you're TCU, you have to take it where it comes because everybody is always cynical when it comes to that team. You know, you heard of the broadcast today how they have a tough schedule on the road. They have to have a bunch of pretty points and style points and all of that when they play games because they're not a national brand. But this team is missing players on defense. You saw Mike Freeze miss today's game. is on a leave of absence. They're starting middle linebacker. Also missing McFarland, who led the team in sacks last year. This team is going to jail. And you saw it. You had Cole Halson, the backup QB, got in at the second half. And got a, a guy with seven for nine, had a couple touchdown passes. This team is going to be scary once they get their feet under them. Want to give another shout to Kevontae Turpin. This guy, wow, got his first touchdown catch today. Just bounced off the defender. Also was a showstopper on punt returns gotta watch this guy. This guy as a freshman is already showing potential. Once he gets the experience, he is going to be a game breaker. Really excited to see what he's going to bring. They already have Kobe Lizabee, Josh Dotson. Watch out! Because Trayvon Boykin is not going to allow this team to fall and really just have any faulty games. Because against Minnesota, they, they were a little bit off, but hey, that's a tough team you're playing. And if you actually watch, instead of listening to all these blowhard pundits, Minnesota's going to be in the hunt this year for the Big Ten title. Because last year, if you saw them play Ohio State to the end, you know they're a good team. But that's neither nor there. 
if you're a TCU fan, you know these things happen that they can get much respect no matter what. Hey, after last week, you know it's back. They win on the road against Minnesota, and they drop behind Alabama in the polls to number three. Incredible. Just incredible. Only team in the country to get punished for winning. I'm sure that Auburn will get punished for having to go to overtime and win against Jacksonville State. I'm just sure of it. Just because they play in that mighty SEC. I'm pretty sure that will not happen. So, like I said, great win for for TCU today. Look good to see them really hit on all cylinders and everything. And, of course, coming into next week, the annual beatdown of SMU is on tap. And the great Chad Morris, or some people seem to be making him out to be the new Newt Rockney. So, looking forward to seeing the annual beatdown, like I said, of, T- of SMU next week. So, with all that being said, I will be back next week with a recap of TCU play their rival, SMU. And as always, want to hear comments on this game against Stephen F. Austin? Were you impressed by their win? Also, were you impressed by Kevante Turpin? What do you think about Kobe Lizardy's big game? And as always, I want you to comment, like, and subscribe to Unrivaled Multimedia. And as always, until the next episode of The Blitz, take it easy.